So in this tutorial, we are going to talk about standing wave. So what is standing wave? So standing wave is just basically a vibration of the system in which some particular point remain fixed while others between them vibrate with the maximum amplitude. What do I mean? What I mean here is that the amplitude and the, f uh, the frequency remains the same. Okay, in this case. So what is happening is that it is called standing wave because the length doesn't change. So it is just fixed. You can see that I've got two pillars here from this diagram. I've got this pillar and that pillar. Now in between I've got a lobe. Now the length of this lobe is not going to change. No matter how much I can produce waves, the length will be the same. So the length doesn't change. That's the reason why we are calling it a standing wave. Okay, The length will just be fixed. Okay, now, if a force is applied in between here, a wave is going to be generated. What do I mean? So if a wave has, is going to be generated, it can be generated in that manner. Or, okay, now, what if I have got um, two pillars and then a wave has been generated? Let me just draw this. I have this. I have applied a force now here. You plug it then a wave is going to be generated. That is a wave. Okay? A wave has been generated. So you discover that this length will remain the same, will not change. I can also have another one, a different wave can be generated as well. Okay? So a, 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 another wave like this, it can be generated. I can also have a different one. Okay? Then let's have this. So a wave like this will be generated. So we can clearly see that we can have many, many number of loops. Okay? Now, if you have got a wave which is in this form, if you have a wave in this form, this part here is what we call the node. This is the node. This part here is what we call the antinode. The antinode, if you hear antinodes, we is the same as the number of loops. Now you discover to say the nodes here have got three nodes, then I've got two antinodes. So here I've got one, two. I've got two nodes, but I've got only one node, antinode. Then here I've got one, two, three antinodes or three nodes and then I've got one, two antinodes. Okay? Now the trend which I want you to, to see now here is this. I'm going to have the first one which is here. This is a node, a node. Then another one which is like that. Then another one will be like that. Then let's, let's have the fourth one which will be like that. Okay, so this is a node, a node, 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 this is antinode, this is antinode, antinode, node, 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 again this is the antinode, 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 then you have got node, 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 node. So you discover to say the first part here, we have got two nodes, and one antinode. The second part here we have got three nodes and two antinodes. The third part here we have got four nodes and three antinodes. Then this one we have got one, two, three, four, five. We have got five nodes and four antinodes, which is one, two, three, four, four antinodes. 
So we can clearly say that eh, we can come up with a formula to say from the first part here, if I've got two nodes, so a node, meaning that for us to find antinode, antinode is just um, is going to be equal to a node minus one. So the first part, if I have got two nodes, for me to find the antinode, if I do two minus one, it's going to give me one. At the same time, I can say node is equal to the antinode plus one, which is just the same thing. So in this case, if I've got one antinode plus one, it's going to give me two, which is two nodes. So this is a formula which you need to be familiar with under nodes and antinodes. But like we have said, n is the number of loops. So number of loops is the same as the antinode. These are number of loops. These are loops. This is a loop, a loop, a loop, a loop, a loop, a loop. Okay? So now when we're talking about the antinode and node, what should be remembering is when we're talking about the antinode, it's the same as the number of loops. Okay? So if you know the number of loops, meaning you know the antinode. If you know the antinode, you can say antinode is equal to node minus one. Okay, or node is equal to antinode plus one to find the antinode. If you know the to find the node, if you know the antinode. Okay. Now let's let's go back to our um, to our diagrams here. The first one here is what we call if n is equal to one. If I've got only one loop, then we are dealing with the first harmonic. The first harmonic, this harmonic, it is the same as in the overtone. It is also called overtone. At the same time, it is called the fundamental frequency. So if we're talking about the first harmonic, first overtone, and first fundamental frequency, we are still talking about the same thing. The second harmonic, the second overtone, the second fundamental frequency, we are still talking about the same thing. Okay. So if n is equal to 1, we are dealing with the first fundamental frequency. If n is equal to 2, the second fundamental frequency. If n is equal to 3, just like that. So n can be anything. n can be 1, can be 2, can be 3, can be 4 and so on and so forth. Now, one thing we need to understand here if we talk about the wavelength. Since we know that length, the SI unit is in meters. Also, the lambda, the SI unit is also in meters. Now, let's rewrite the length in terms of the wavelength. So, the first part which I have here, we can clearly see that if I've got a wave which is like this, that is one wavelength. Okay? Because I've got it, this is half, and that is also half. Half plus half is going to give me one. Meaning that the first part which I have here, it is just half a wavelength. Meaning that L can be written as 1 over 2 a wavelength. Okay? What of here? This is the wavelength, which is the same as 2 over 2. So L will be equal to 2 over 2 the wavelength. Then here I'll have... Um, it's more like I've got half, the first part, which is half, half, also half. So from here to there is half, there half, also there half. So half, half, half is going to be 3 over, so L will be equal to 3 over 2 lambda. Now you can clearly see that if I have got 4, it's going to be L is equal to 4 over 2 lambda. So you can clearly see that the denominator will not change. We we'll we'll still have two. Then we can we can say that this L is given by n divided by two times lambda n. Lambda n means we don't know the lambda we are talking about. That's why I'm putting it as lambda n. Okay. Now in this case, what we need to understand now is that since we have got it, we have come up with this formula. N is the number of loops. In the first part, we have got only one loop, so n is equal to 1, that's why we have got 1. The second part, the number of loops we have got 2, that's why we have got 2. The third part, the number of loops is 3, that's why we have got 3 on top. Okay, so n is the number of loops. Now, this formula is very important. Okay, 
if I know the length, I can I know I, if I know the lam, uh, the length, I, I I also know the number of loops. I can use this formula to find the lambda. So this is the same as L is equal to n lambda n divided by two. Let's cross multiply. We make lambda as a subject of formula. N lambda n will be equal to two L. Divide both sides by n, both sides by n. So what I want you to understand is that this formula is very important understanding waves. At the same time, since these will cancel, I'll also have another formula for lambda to be equal to 2L divided by N. This is also very important. Okay, now let's talk more about the fundamental frequency. Okay, so let me just get rid of this. Let me just get rid of this part here. And I'm going to put these formulas here. L is equal to n over 2 lambda n. And also another formula is lambda n should be equal to 2L divided by n. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. So we want to find the frequency. So the speed of sound in air, if they do not mention anything about the temperature, just know that the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. Okay. Now another thing which you have to know is that we want to find the fundamental frequency. Since we have come up with the formula for the lambda. So V is equal to the frequency. Now the fundamental frequency we don't know whether we are talking about the first overtone the second overtone, so I'm going just to put Fn. So n is the number of loops, because if n is equal to 1, mean, meaning I'm talking about the first fundamental frequency. If n is equal to 2, I'm talking about the second fundamental frequency. If n is equal to 3, I'm talking about the third harmonic motion. So I also say lambda n. We want to make a uh, frequency as a subject of formula. Let's divide both sides by lambda n. So the frequency n will be equal to V divided by this. Okay. So now we know that the lambda can be can be written by 2L divided by N. So let's replace now lambda with 2L divided by N. But this is the same as V divided by 2L divided by N. So V times N divided by 2L. Meaning that the fundamental frequency now will be equal to N times V is NV divided by 2L. This formula is very important. If I know the velocity, okay, now you only use 343 if they have not mentioned anything about the velocity. If they give you the temperature, you need to find the velocity using this formula. 331, the square root of the temperature divided by 273 Kelvin. Now, the temperature, if you have been given in degrees, you have to convert it to Kelvin. How do you convert from degrees to Kelvin? Add what you have. If you have maybe 10 degrees Celsius, add this 10 to 273, meaning that is now your temperature in Kelvin. Then find the velocity. Okay. Now, let's talk more about this, these formulas. So, we have come up with a general formula for the fundamental frequency. Okay. So if n is equal to 1, meaning I'm talking about the first fun, uh, fundamental frequency, like I've said earlier. Now, sometimes they can give you the velocity. The sp um, we know also that the, the, the speed, um, the velocity of the wave on a string can also be given by um, the square root of the tension force divided by the mu value. Okay. You can also use this to find the velocity if you have been given the mu value. Now, mu is the linear density. Linear density is given that by the mass divided by the length. So you'll be given the mass, the length, then you plug in the values to find the velocity. If you have been given the mass, the length, and the, temp, um, and the tension force, you can find the velocity in that way. Meaning that I can also say that Fn, which is the fundamental frequency, n divided by 2L times V. So I can replace V with this. Okay? 
Therefore, there is also this formula which you need to be familiar with. N divided by 2L times the square root of the tension force divided by the mu value. This formula is also very important. So N can be anything. N can be 1, N can be 2, 3. Okay. Now, another formula which you have to know for the fundamental frequency is this. Let's say we want to find the first fundamental frequency. Now I'll use this one. The first fundamental frequency is going to be F1. If N is equal to 1, N times V, 1 times V is going to be V over 2L. That is the first fundamental frequency. What if we want to find the second fundamental frequency, meaning N is equal to 2? So it's going to be 2. Here let me just put 1. Okay, I want to show you something. It's going to be 2 times V divided by 2L. If N is equal to 3, we're talking about the third harmonic, it will be 3V divided by 2L. Now one thing we want you, I want you to understand here is that if N is equal to 4, it will be 4V divided by 2L. This part doesn't change. The only thing which changes is the N. Okay? This part here doesn't change. This part. It's the same. Therefore, I can say that Fn is equal to N times, if this part here is C, this part here, the one which I've just highlighted in white, is the first fundamental frequency. Times the first fundamental frequency. So if I know the first fundamental frequency, I can also use this formula. If n is equal to, to 2, then I'll say 2 times the first fundamental frequency. That will be now the second fundamental frequency from these formulas. Okay? So this is what you need to know under fundamental frequency. That is very, very important. Okay. So now, if the... If, if the if n is equal to 1, okay, if n is equal to 1, then you discover that you just have this, v over 2l. So this is the basic idea behind standing wave. Now let's see how we can uh, try to solve some different questions under fundamental frequency. So the first question I have is this, which is, find the frequencies of the fundamental second and the third of the steel wire one meter long with a mass per unit length of 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3 kg per, uh, per meter and under a tension of 80 newton but b find the wavelength of the sound wave created by the vibrating wire for all three nodes so in this case okay assume that the speed of the sound in air is we have been given the speed of sound which is just cool for the second part then suppose the wire is a carbon with a density of 7.8 times 10 to the power 3 kg per cubic meter, a cross-section area of um, 2.56 times 10 to the power negative 7 square meter, and an elast uh, elastic limit of 2.8 times 10 to the power 8 pascals, find the fundamental frequency if the wire is tightened to elastic limit, neglect the stretching of the wire. Let's start with the first part. Let's first uh, come up with data for part A. So part A, we know that we have been given the length. What is our length? One meter. What else? The mass. The mass is 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3. Okay. Then what is the frequency? Have we been given the frequency? No. The force, which is the tension force, Ft is equal to 80 newton okay so i'm going to solve this question using two different methods because i've i've, I've um i think i've explained three uh, formulas on how to find the fundamental frequency so the question is we need to find the second fundamental frequency the question is find the fundamental the frequencies of the fundamental second and the third okay second and the third we are not interested in the first fundamental frequency so for the second part for the second fundamental frequency n is equal to 2 for the third n is equal to 3 okay now so if n is equal to 
1 meaning we're talking about the first fundamental frequency if n is equal to 1 that is what we said if n is equal to 2 we're talking about the second fundamental frequency if n is equal to 3 we're talking about the third fundamental frequency so in this case since we're talking about the third um, we're reaching all the way to third fundamental frequency meaning okay I'll explain what I want to explain on uh, part B now we want to find and remember we have this information here so the fundamental frequency is given by NV divided by 2L okay now V since we have, uh, we have been given them the mass and the length then V can be given by the square root of the tension force divided by the mu so I can say FN will be equal to N divided by 2L times the square root of uh, ft divided by mu if you want you can first find the velocity and plug in dialect here so let's use this formula now to find the first fundamental frequency or the second since we're interested in the second and the third one so the third the second so n is equal to 2 the length is 1 so the tension force is 80 then mu how can we find the mu value like I said, the mu value is given by the mass divided by the length. So the mass is 2. Point, the mass is 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3 divided by 1. So we end up having the same 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3. So I'll have 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3. Okay? So the second fundamental frequency will be I'll have 80 divided by 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3. Then I get the square root is 4,000. The square root of 4,000 is 200. So 200 times 2 in, divided by 2 is 1. So it's times 1, which is just 200. So it is 200 hertz. That is the second fundamental frequency. Okay. 200 hertz. What of the third fundamental frequency? So the third fundamental frequency, let me just put this fundamental frequency here. 200 hertz. Using the same one, meaning the third one, n will be equal to, to 3. So it will be F3 will be equal to 3 divided by 2 times 1. The square root of the tension force is 80 then this is 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3. So since we said inside there we found a 200. So we just say 3 divided by 2 then times 200. That is 300. So the third fundamental frequency is 300 hertz. As simple as that. Okay. So that is it for the first part. Now I can also use another formula. Like I said, I gave you two formulas. I mentioned to say you can also use this formula to find the fundamental frequency. Fn is given by um, n times f1. Meaning for this one, you need first to find the first fundamental frequency. So how can we find the first fundamental frequency? To find the first fundamental frequency, Meaning, I'm going to say, since we said Fn is given by Nv divided by 2L. So the velocity, so it's going to be N is equal to, the velocity, this is 1, 2, L is 1. The velocity is the square root of the tension force, which is 80, divided by 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3, which is the linear density. So F1 will be equal to, 80 inside there it was 200 200 times 0 0.5 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 so it's 100 after finding the first fundamental frequency now I can come here and plug in I want to find the second fundamental frequency where n is equal to 2 so it will be 2 times 100 so the second fundamental frequency using another formula I will still get 200 hertz even here I found 200 hertz to find the second one is going to be 3 times 100, which is 300. And we also found what? 300 hertz. As simple as that. 
okay so that is very very important for you to to know how to um, to come up with what the fundamental frequency let's now jump to b so part b now we have changed okay we have changed but the question is connected find the wavelength of sound wave created by the vibrating wire of all three nodes so if i've got three nodes one two three if i have three nodes i expect to have uh two antinodes or oh, yes two antinodes now we want to find the velocity we've been given already now in this case this question is not even hard the first fundamental frequency we said is 100 from the first question from part a the second one was 200 the third one was 300 and we've been told that the, the speed of sound is um, we need to use 343 meters per second so we want to find the wavelength so V the first one V will be equal to Fn times lambda n I want to find lambda n so lambda n will be equal to V divided by frequency n so if V I want to find the first one where n is equal to 1 I'll use the first fundamental frequency okay so I'll say lambda 1 will be equal to 343 divided by 100 so lambda 1 will be equal to 343 divided by 100 it is 3.45 meters then when lambda is 2 I'll say 343 divided by the lambda that is going to be 200 lambda 2 will be equal to 343 divided by 200 that is 1.72 meters then again lambda 3 will be equal to 343 I'll use now 300 so it will be 343 divided by 300 that is lambda 3 will be equal to 1.14 meters so this is the wavelength the first one is that the second one and the third one and this is making sense if the frequency is less we expect the wavelength to to increase because the frequency and the wavelength they are inverse proportion to each other okay now the density of that a cross-section area of that an elasticity limit of that find the fundamental frequency if the wire is tightened to elastic limit negate any stretching of the wire so what is happening there is uh, you use this formula elasticity limit is, is given by force divided by area and we want to find the what the frequency so first we need to find the tension force because I have to use this where n will be equal to 1 so I need first to find the mu value I need first to find the the mu value since we are talking about the same thing the mu value I'm going to use the first one I'm going to use the first one which is 2.00 times 10 to the power negative 3 that is going to be the mu value this one so if you plug in the values here you discover that you don't have the fundamental frequency so you use this formula the elasticity limit is going to be equal to the force divided by area you have the area the force what is going to be the force in this case okay you need first since you have the elasticity and the area find the force once you find the force put the force here and find that so I want you to go ahead and find this question and then upload the answer or um, post the answer in the comment section or you can uh, post the answer um, in the description or even direct my whatsapp number so that I see what you are going to find that is it for this one the one we forgot to solve